Hello, this is going to be part two of my visit to Wilmington and the Long Mat. If you haven't seen part one, I will add it down in the description below. Um, if you're a subscriber, if I could take this opportunity to thank you for all of your support. If this is your first time to the channel, if you could um, hit the subscribe button, it will help me to invest more equipment into the channel and be able to get out and make more videos. Um, if my voice does sound uh, a little bit uh, funny, uh, I've got a throat thing going on at the moment, so I'm going to try and be as clear as possible. So we've done is we've come and parked in this car park here, Wilmington. Looks to me like it was um, an old barn of some description, and uh, it's right next to a priory. And we've got some um, some very large stones at the bottom of this. So it could have been made up from a, uh, a much older building. If we look up just over there, we can see uh, the priory and the church. So what we're going to do, um, we're going to head on down to the main road and then along to the church. And then we're going to turn right and that will start taking us up onto the downs. We're going to visit the Longman and we're also going to visit some Neolithic hill forts just above the Long Man of Wilmington. Here we come across uh, the church of Wilmington, St. Mary and St. Peter of Wilmington. And we're going to head up in that direction to the Long Man. So, panoramic views over Sussex here, and uh, we started about there at the church. Um, it's not a big spire on the church because you can't see it above the trees, but um, roughly where that little house is is where we started the climb. And right here we've got evidence of, um, well, my perception is evidence of Neolithic Flint mining here. Got these uh, little divots here, possibly dug out to extract flints and um, use as a fire pit. Um, a bit more down there. And basically, we came up through this gate down here. Lovely tree lined walk. Um, heading eastbound but decided not to film the junction just because there's a group of young hikers there I'm sure they don't want to be on exploring Sussex so now we need to head off in that direction so although I've got a bit of a, a croaky voice as it is today as you can see I'm still fighting fit um, no problems doing this hill climb wonderful walk this just literally crawling along the side of the hill right next to the long man beautiful bird of prey there as well just soaring on the thermals it's very easy to see from this perspective why the long man will be placed uh, on this slope so the south downs um, have a uh, a much gentler slope to the south and then on the north they have a very sharp slope demonstrated just over there um, I think they call it the scarp, scarp face um, it's very steep so as you can see if you wanted to make a uh, an image into the hillside you'd want it on a hillside that was almost vertical so everyone could see so great location um, 
and it's uh, in a, a coom as such essentially so past this uh, boundary over here you wouldn't be able to see it so it's definitely illuminating a specific audience so come to a junction here uh, obviously the more travelled route is to the base of the Longman um, I'm going to head up here and then I'm going to do my return journey down that way and then there's a path I think just down there that takes us back down to the car park which if we look over there is this sort of grey grey building um, it's what used to be a barn um, and we can actually see the church spire now just poking out of the trees so earlier couldn't see it can see that now but the reason that I'm going to go up this path is um, because I want to see what's just above the long man just over in the distance there we can see I think that is Arlington Reservoir um, but again great views looking out over Sussex a long man being down there but the reason I've turned the camera on is here we reach some of the Neolithic structures probably a flint mine there um, but we've got some banking done here I guess these sort of banks are built up um, if you did want to sit out and um, look at the view you'd need somewhere to sit not that I know there was any raiding that went on in this area but could even just be a signalling post um, or it may be not, not Neolithic it could be something built up for World War II and could be a, a site for an anti-aircraft gun so yeah, gonna head off further up and then we should reach the top right so it looks like we're on the uh, pilgrim's path um, Maybe something I'll to do in a future video. It looks like it heads off in that direction and off in this direction. So yeah, I'm gonna head off in this way. So we've uh, found the wind up here. Hope it's not gonna to be too windy and I have got the fluffy on the mic. So hopefully you're gonna be able to hear me okay. So this is the reason that I wanted to do this walk. Uh, and that's because it's another hill fort, another Neolithic hill fort. And right above the head of the long man of Wilmington. And I've said this before in other videos, you don't see it until you see it. But um, this has um, common similarities to the Devil's Humps. The reason being is that we're on a ridge line heading north to south and we have a hill fort or ceremonial mound or some kind of man-made structure on that ridge line um, with views of east and west so um, yeah pattern recognition is good with me and uh, I've never been to this area before Oh wow, um, I am going to set up a camera up on top so we can pick this up but just over there in the distance we've got the uh, horse, the white horse at um, Alfriston. So absolutely epic to be able to see that from here and over in that direction, I'm not sure again the camera will pick it up but I will use telescopic zoom but we've got Mount Caburn another hill fort over in that direction I am blissfully unaware what's over this way but 
Looking here, we've got pretty much the same formation as the Devil's Humps. A small moat and a mound in the middle. Yeah, mound in the middle with the bottom of it cut out. Wow. So, just going to take a moment just to pan round so we can see everything from up here. You can see why the pilgrims would want to walk past this. So, um, just below it here is the hill fort. Um, so, obviously, you've got this sort of uh, ridge line entrance over there, and it forms a ring just above the head of the Long Man of Wilmington. Now, uh, none of us actually know why the Long Man was put there. Um, originally, he was a, um, a formation that just stood out in the grassland um, as if uh, uh, something had been there in the past. So, um, uh, in the, I think it was 1700s, uh, the locals outlined him with some yellow brick and now he has been filled in with white chalk so he stands out better uh, than he did. Um, but from my perspective, obviously I have got a little bit of knowledge of the esoteric. Um, and so the long man to me um, stands for duality. He has two staffs in his hands and those staffs um, demonstrate the duality of life. And whether that was the purpose or whether that was a, a reconstruction that was made when he was redone by the uh, people in the 1700s and 1800s um, to make it more esoteric, I don't know. Um, but in the mysticism, like I said, duality, day and night, um, dark and light, um, bohemian, oh, I can't think of the other name, but yeah, the Masons are into it all. So they, they've, they're, they're, they're into this duality and you'll often find duality demonstrated um, in places like uh, Masonic lodges that always have twin pillars um, either side of the entrance um, and inside the lodge around the chairs they have these twin pillars um, and going to uh, more modern um, things it's why the twin towers in New York those two towers uh, demonstrating the duality of life um, but what is interesting is if that was um, made, having a ring above the head. So again, in esoteric and mysticism, the ring above the head demonstrates, um, you know, come, again, being above the human, coming outside of the body, the spirit. And maybe that's what the long man of Wilmington is about. Um, it could be that he's about uh, the... Um, rising above the um, the meat suit inside the what I'm calling a fort although there's no historical evidence uh, that this was a fort because this was 3,000 years ago um, but it's definitely man-made um, and man-made in a particular shape um, to have this specific entrance right there and uh, interesting feature you find with all of these um, areas, and it's probably just a locality thing, is this uh, thorny bush. So it's always in the same locations as these hill forts and uh, burial mounds. So um, we're gonna head this way towards the long man himself or herself. Wow, amazing bird of prey. Comment down below if you know what type of bird this is. As they always say, perspective is everything from right here, you can't see anything at all of the uh, long man, but as you get a little bit closer, he appears. And there we go. 
So it looks like his current shape is being uh, outlined by these square bricks. And if I remember rightly, these are concrete bricks that have been painted white, so they stand out well. Uh, but it looks like they need a new coat of paint. at the base of the long man just got a little information board here telling us that he stands 70 meters high 231 feet um, which is equivalent to the height of almost 40 men so the earliest known reference to the long man suggests the original figure was a marking in the grass rather than a solid line during the Victorian period the shape was marked with yellow bricks more recently replaced with concrete blocks the long man is best viewed from a distance. Aerial photographs show the true shape of the long man is elongated, though from the ground he assumes a normal human proportion. So I'm going to end the video up here. Um, if you have made it to this point, if I could thank you for watching it. Hope you've enjoyed it. I've had some challenging uh, conditions today. Started the day out uh, with the weather looking like it was going to be fairly cold and uh, foggy and, uh, and then picking up uh, wind speed later in the day um, and uh, yeah we have experienced some very strong winds today which seem to be commonplace at the moment sort of uh, every day is in the region of 25 mile an hour winds which is not great for um, filming uh, due to the drone getting thrown around and um, also uh, wind noise on the mic so um, Thank you very much for watching. If you could like and subscribe, it will help me to invest in better equipment to help me get out and film more often.